Today I'm going to clean the keyboard on the Amiga because uh, this is pretty disgusting really. Uh, there's a lot of fluff and dust under the keys. The keys are really dirty. So it'd just be nice to give that a clean so I know what I'm actually typing on. I've got one of these uh, key pullers. Looks a little bit like one of those latte coffee whisk things. And you just put these over the key and then twist them at an angle so that uh, basically it will get under uh, two corners of the key and then you just pull up and it should pop out hopefully without destroying anything and as you can see there's a, a spring that belongs there and that's what pushes the key back up and then the key uh, clips into this little plastic turret thing here so One reason to use these key pullers rather than just leaving them up with your finger or a screwdriver is that uh, I can show this on the screen here when you get this on un underneath and twist it these sit further in to the centre of the key so when you pull it you're getting a more even pull and it's not going to twist the key as it pulls it off which can sometimes result in these um, turret bits that the keys actually lock into getting broken and splitting so it just makes it less likely that you'll cause damage if you use one of these key pullers that's all the small keys off <clears throat> the rest of them I'm going to do by hand because now the small keys are gone it's easier to get under these and lift them up under an even pressure to release them a little bit less violent than the key puller Some of the keys have got uh, bars underneath them which um, basically spreads the pressure when you press the key so the key goes down evenly even though it's a wide key. So you need to be careful with them not to just pull them straight up because you could cause damage. So you just need to gently leave them up enough to release them. You can see that's attached still. You can see under here how these are attached. There's these little plastic um, bits under the key here and the, the spar basically runs inside that okay a channel inside this plastic standoff and then they're attached to the the main keyboard with these plastic lugs and you basically have to put a bit of pressure towards the back end of the keyboard and then that will unsnap this bar from the keyboard. I'll just show that. Hopefully, be able to show that here. There's like a hook on that bit of plastic, and that's what the bar locks into. So you have to push uh, the the metal bar that way to release it. Again, you can see here the metal bar on this um, enter key. Uh, you can either push against this to unclip it, which in this case is quite tight. Another way to do these, if you're a bit unsure of how much pressure to put on, is to actually unhook the metal bar from, from here. Just put a bit of pressure to, to bend that slightly and then you'll be able to unhook it. And you should be able to then unhook the other side as well from these little plastic uh, bits here, you can see. And that makes it a little bit easier then because you can slide this to unhook it. So that's another way if you don't want to put any pressure on it. It may be a better way, less likely to cause any damage by doing this. So we'll, we'll try that method again here. So just put a bit of sideways pressure on that, unhook it. and then turn that and slide it out and then the other side will release so I think that's actually a better way of doing it 
than just pulling them out because it doesn't put any strain on anything then. So on this tab key we'll, I'll do the same process again. Pull the key up enough to release it. If it doesn't pull all the way off then you can use this slightly more gentler method of uh, releasing it. And what we'll do is push the key to one side and just put a little bit of a tension on that bar and it bends it and it will release one side. You can then slide the key across and that releases the key off of the keyboard and then the bar can be slid and removed and there's no strain put on any of these plastic clips if you do it that way. I should have done the other keys that way but they've come off and nothing's broken so. And then the space bar is just a bigger version of the same sort of thing. Um, now the actual clip point is in the middle so if you if you put your fingers more towards the middle when you pull it you won't bend the space bar and risk cracking the plastic in any way. So <clears throat> just move more to the centre like I did then. And there's, there's three springs in the space bar. There's the standard um, size of spring. Hopefully you can see that here. And then there's two smaller springs that sit either side of a space bar um, in these holes. So there's these, these little uh, holes there. So they need to go back in there, not under the other keys. I don't think they'd actually fit. No, not properly. So they need to be kept separate really. And then again, same, same mechanism with the space bar. You can just pull it to one side, put a little bit of tension on the side of the bar and that will release it and then the other side you can then just slide off and then again same here you can just slide this along. Uh, actually no, this is different. See? Space bar is a little bit more tricker. And there we go, all that lovely dirty fluff to clean off. Great. Uh, the next step will be to separate this keyboard membrane from the PCB so that when we take this apart, there's no risk of that flopping around and then potentially causing damage to this. It could tear it. So I'm going to release that first, and that's fairly easily done by you know, either use a flat bladed screwdriver or perhaps something pointed like this and you basically just need to lever this little part of the clip over here and you'll see that's opened up. Once you've got both sides free you can then get your fingernails in there and uh, make sure that's pulled all the way forward and then that's released so that can pull away without any damage. So I'll turn that over now and we've got some screws on the back of the PCB. I'm going to separate everything. Also we've got a cable tie on here that needs clipping. This is preventing the wires from being pulled off the PCB but it's also holding this PCB onto the metal chassis so we need to clip that to get this off. Should now be able to pull that away uh, gently. There's some plastic lugs that you can see here and up here. So you need to lift the board just a little bit up at the back to get over them and then you'll be able to pull it away. Now the cable tie is still hanging on so it probably would have been better to remove that completely first. But that's the PCB controller removed then. And then this is the flat flex that we need to be careful of. That's all the screws removed, so 
theoretically now should be able to just lift the metal plate, just give it a bit of a, a knock, and then that's freed the keyboard membrane and the plastic carrier that all the keys were attached to. That gives us a chance to wipe this down. I'm, I'm not going to really scrub this up or anything, I'll just give it a wipe. Now the membrane, we're just going to lift that off carefully. On this keyboard it's just one piece because the the switch contacts are made by these little rubbery bits on each of the keys. Some membranes are, are different, they'll have uh, two, two pieces with a third sandwich between the middle with cutouts and it's the pressing together of the two different membranes, a top and bottom layer, that creates the key contacts. On the Amiga it's different, the membrane's just got these little pads for each of the keys. I'll zoom that so that's easier to see. And then the shorting of these, which is uh, achieved by the key being pressed, is what gives you a key press. These little rubber, rubbery bits on here, they're conductive. So I'll put the membrane somewhere safe out of the way, somewhere flat where it's not going to get damaged. Now removing these plastic plungers is quite easy. You can just tip it basically. Just have to be careful that they don't fall over everywhere and get lost. So as you can see with these little uh, plungers, they've got these these little rubbery pads on the end and they're what makes the contact and they just basically press up and they've got a little bit of a buffering effect to them because of the way they're made so that stops the membrane being damaged. Uh, I would say with these unless there's something been spilt in them you're better off leaving these in, in one piece not taking them apart because you can actually unhook these off of the plungers and, and just leaving them. I mean you could wipe wipe the ends of these if you felt the need, if any of the keys aren't um, working properly. But um, personally I would just leave them alone because they're quite, they could be quite delicate, quite easy to damage. Now just one thing I have noticed before I give these a clean, um, apart from the fact that the caps lock key's got a, a different style of plunger here, the caps lock key itself, as you can see, has got a, a clear insert in the key. The reason being that this little indicator here will light up when the caps um, when the caps lock is on. So there should be an LED for that. Um, there's nothing on the membrane, and there's a hole here, but there's no LED. So that kind of suggests that at some point this keyboard has been opened and someone's lost the LED because it definitely wasn't in here. Um, as I was opening it, I did notice on this side. As you can see there's a hole here where the LED should poke up. I did notice as I was taking it apart, I couldn't see anything there. But I didn't twig until I would completely opened it. So it looks like I'm going to have to find an LED that I can fit into that um, to fix that. And you should be able to see on here, if I get these in aligned, that would be the pad for the CAPS key. And then here there's two additional contacts, which is where the LED is supposed to touch um, to get its power. And then it, it loops from here over to there. So I'm assuming there must be some sort of pad that should go in there as well. But all of that seems to be missing, so that's a problem. For the membrane I've decided I'm just going to use a damp, clean uh, cloth. Just give it a gentle wipe. Hopefully that will clear off any any muck. So that's just wipe that down. There's not really much on here. And then I'm using an old t-shirt as a rag just to, to dry that off so there's no water residue left on it. Obviously be careful of this, you don't want to catch that connecting point and tear it. Otherwise you're going to have problems. Let's dry this so that I can turn this over. Ah, just wipe the back with a dry cloth. And I'll put that near somewhere warm. Not obviously not too warm because you don't want this to melt and uh, deform. So I'm in the kitchen at the minute. Lighting's not the best in here, unfortunately. Um, 
one thing I'd suggest if you've got something like one of these filters I'd put that in the sink because if any springs or anything have got in here that you haven't realised it'd be easy to lose them down the sink and also these little plastic inserts that you get in the larger keys for the um, the little metal bars to run in they can come out and they'd be, again they'd be easy to lose down the hole that big luckily I've got one of those another thing I'd say is be careful with the temperature of water that you use you want it quite warm but if you go too hot if you, if you use water straight out of a kettle you're probably going to melt the keys which is obviously not going to be what you want I'm also just going to put a small squidge of bleach in there, that should help. And I'm just going to put these in and then leave them for a bit. Come back to them later to give them a scrub. Now the enter key doesn't want to fit. Well, we'll do that one in here. And then this plastic um, carrier. We'll just give that a good scrub down. What I'm going to use is a paintbrush to do this because it's going to be easier to get in and it's not too harsh. You obviously want to be careful not to push too hard on this as well because you could crack it by pressing on it. So first thing I'll just give it a bit of a rinse off to get most of the horrible fluff and crap off. Again, be mindful of how hot the water is. Probably not such an issue with this, but again, I don't think boiling water out of the kettle would be a good idea. So a bit of fairy on the brush, and then you can just get in between everything, up and down all these channels. And then again, if you do that the other way as well, then that should get all of the dirt. Try giving that a bit of a rinse. So that's, uh, that's looking miles better already. There's probably not too much uh, need to do anything with the back, but obviously again if you've had a keyboard that's had something spilt in it, you might have to start cleaning in these gaps, because that could cause the plungers to stick when the keys are pressed. So again, something like a brush scrubbed in there, or maybe just leaving this in a bowl to soak a bit, and then going in there. You could even use cotton buds perhaps uh, in there to do that. But this one's alright, so I'm just going to give it a, a waft over and... Try not to smash it on the uh, sink. It just helps get excess water out. Obviously don't, don't do it like this, because again you can break it. And the metal plate, I'm just going to use a, a damp cloth to wipe it and then I'm going to dry it straight after with a towel. So I'll put these somewhere to dry now where it's warm near a radiator or fire or something. I've had these keys in soak for a while now. It was only supposed to be for a few hours but they've been in here for about three weeks. So I'm just going to give these a scrub up and then rinse them off. boring job, just a bit of fairy liquid and just give them a scrub all around. You can see probably on here they're actually still quite yellow. That won't scrub off unfortunately. Now I'm just going to rinse them out. I'm just trying to shake as much water off as I can. So I'm going to try and get these dry as I can now. One problem with these is the water tends to collect in these little holes. And you really need to get that dried up fully before you put them back onto the keyboard. 
you can either leave them out for a couple of days to dry or put them near something warm. Another trick is to use something like an air compressor and um, you can just give it a quick blast and that will force any water that's trapped in these little holes to come out and then they'll dry quicker. So that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly give all of these a blast and that should get rid of most of the water. I think the compressor looks quite at home there between the toaster and the kettle. I've laid all the keys out on a towel there near the fire at the minute so I'll let that uh, dry them out a bit and then I'll turn them over and they should be ready to snap back onto the uh, rest of the keyboard then.